All right, so I have a 10-year-old bike that I've never touched. Uh, replaced the chain, did a video on that. Uh, I was going to replace, well, I am going to replace the freewheel, which is this gear set here, and I did want to replace this plastic. Uh, they're calling it a spoke guard uh, with, with a stainless steel metal one, but that's taking forever to get here. Uh, so, still I'm going to pull the wheel because, you know, we're not going to be riding anytime soon. And I'll go ahead and replace the free wheel. Okay, what's a free wheel? What's a cassette? Well, they're both the same. It's a series of gears. It's just with the free wheel, uh, they're all riveted together, basically. And with the cassette sets of gears or individual gears are all separate and you stack one on top of another so that's kind of the difference between a freewheel and cassette. Uh, I also thought I would clean up the freewheel mounting mechanism you know you hear the clicking here wait a minute you hear that clicking the uh, free wheel rides on that. That locks it when it goes forward. So since it's 10 years old, you know, I figured it'd be pretty dirty. I mean, this chain has gone, well, let's see, about 10 miles. <laughs> yeah. And it's already dirty. I don't know if we can get a zoom in there. I have a brand new chain already dirty and I haven't done anything to it I just mounted it on there I cleaned up all the gears put the chain on didn't lubricate it or anything I found lubricant just attracts dirt instead of keeping it away or protecting the chain <laughs> so uh, here we got some right here you know so it's just it's just amazing I guess the planet earth is made of dirt so you can expect dirt to get on this thing as it goes through the air <laughs> and the ground so anyway I have a couple teeth that are worn and if you look the Shimano actually has cuts in it I mean they're not square and that helps the chain uh, shift on there a little more smoothly doesn't have to be exact before the chain jumps, which is really nice. Uh, also, I've only known Shimano in my whole life, all the bicycles I've owned over the years. Here you can see some good wear right there. Uh, I've been Shimano, so I don't know all the other different uh, brands. Uh, you know, and we're just talking basics here. Very, very, very basic. So I'm going to pull the wheel off and uh, change the gear. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, release the brakes so that the uh, tire can get past the uh, pads. Okay, I'm going to put the bike in uh, low gear to make it easier to remove so that the uh, skewer can uh, slide past the derailleur. So that's how I'm going to remove the tire, if I can get it off of there without too much trouble. Fun stuff. Alright. Alright, let's take the uh, skewer out here. I guess it's a skewer, like if you're in a barbecue or something. And there are two springs, one on each side. The narrow end points in, and the wide end goes against the cap, whether it's this cap here or the lever on the other side. So, I'll clean that up before I reassemble it. All right, this uh, free wheel uses a uh, tool FR 1.3 and do not willy-nilly go out and just buy a tool. There are 11 different ones 
and the 11 that I counted I think covers cassettes and freewheels. Okay, and much to my surprise, the instructions actually say to use a crescent wrench. I recommend a huge one because the tool is one inch. It's standard. So what's that? 25 millimeters maybe? Uh, but anyway, I have one inch tools. I don't like using a 12 point if I don't have to. So I have a six point which will accept the tool and I have a breaker bar. Uh, three quarters would be nice, but all of my three quarters tools are metric, so I didn't want to go metric. Also, I don't have every single size, so it really isn't a good tight fit. And the instructions specifically call out one inch, so I wouldn't use a 25 millimeter unless I absolutely had to. So I'm going to use a breaker bar and a one inch socket instead of an adjustable wrench, which doesn't make sense. I would think you would use a combination wrench or some other one inch tool instead of an adjustable wrench, but that's just me. Also, your combination wrenches are just a little bit longer, I mean just a hair, so I mean your momentum arm isn't going to be all that great. So, all right, now the instructions also specifically say to leave the axle nut in there until the freewheel or cassette is loose. Uh, it helps keep the tool centered and flat and at a good angle. Whereas if you take the axle out, there's a tendency for it to flop around. So, there's that. Also, before you break it loose, you might want to feel it, see if it's sloppy. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, when I was in industry, we always put on cotton gloves before we put on our vinyl or nitrile gloves over top. Uh, so, this had two purposes. Uh, one, I worked in a contaminated area, but uh, also it keeps the sweat that accumulates in here, keeps the uh, sweat off your hands, makes putting the gloves on and off much easier. So I'll just, I'll just slide right on, super easy. All right, now what I wanted to show you was that all of your loosening and tightening is going to be normal. So uh, what I mean by that is uh, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So left or counterclockwise will take all the bolts off, and clockwise will put them on. All of them except the freewheel body. Or I guess maybe the cassette body, I don't know, the body, the part that goes in the middle here that the axle shaft goes through. Uh, there is a, if you're going to disassemble it, not remove it, but disassemble it, there is a left hand uh, I'll call it a lock ring for now. You know, you're going to need like a, a spanner or something like this to uh, take it off with. Uh, the correct names of these tools are leaving my mind right now. I apologize for that. Also, this is a bicycle video. I'm kind of uh, more mechanical towards cars and industrial components like uh, motors and valves and pumps and things like that. So, anyway, so we'll go on here. Also, if you look, there are no special sizes. Some of them have special sizes where you'll see 
that the raised portion is thinner and off to the side there's a wide portion in one of the tools so you all these tools are different so this one will slide in any which way where some of them are kind of keyed if you will so like I said there are 11 different ones just know what you need ahead of time okay let's see if I can get this off of here set my tool in place have my socket on my breaker bar and I'm just going to place it up against here I don't have one of those chain tools that's new to me I really hadn't seen it before uh, I started looking for tools to take off the free wheel with so anyway uh, I like I've always worked on tires this way just kind of butted it up against the wall and you put your tool in place set everything and see if I can break it loose all right came loose I didn't have to use a cheater bar well that's good because <laughs> cheater bars put me through college the operators would not understand how valves work and they would use cheater bars to close them with and then I would have to repair them and after doing that for a while I saved up enough money to go to college all right I've spun that around two or three times I'm just gonna be lazy and uh, zip it on out of there now that I've broken it loose so I did want to replace this spoke guard um, it's on order it's taken forever uh, I probably won't even show it in this video I'll probably just uh, reinstall this and then uh, replace it later all right using the magic fingers from years gone by I can feel that it's dry no doubt about it hundred percent sure that uh, the old ball bearings can use some grease all right let's see if the camera can pick this up and mostly it's stiff more than making a lot of noise definitely dry all right well I don't know if this matters but this side is a quarter inch a little shy and then the other side is 3 16 a little shy so they aren't even and that is factory well much to my surprise I thought I would be using standard tools but it's 17 millimeter fits much better still a little sloppy but not as sloppy as the 11 16 so the 11 16 is pretty sloppy seven sixteenths about the same so I don't know if this is a bicycle tool but that fits on there real tight uh, I don't know where I got this from but that is good and tight right there that's nice Looks like the other side's coming off, so there's a dust cap on it, so I'll just go ahead and take the nut off and the dust cap, which is kind of rubbery. Looks like I'm going to have to pry it off. So I took the dust cap off, and there's a washer and a spacer, and then another 
like locking nut I guess is going to hold the wheel bearings in place because I do not see a freewheel hub on this bike. You know, this must be a spacer here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pop this side off too. Okay, looks like I'm going to use a 16 millimeter to hold the uh, locking nut for the axle and a 17 millimeter to take the axle nut off. And hopefully it won't fall out and mess me up with ball bearings running all over the place. Alright, same as the other side, only a longer spacer. A longer spacer. Alright, looks like this is just spinning off. So I'm going to leave the other one where it is. Because I didn't measure it. I guess I could measure it. Okay, on the right side, which is the sprocket side, there was, you know, the quarter inch with the spacer in there and the nut tightened down for the axle. And inch and seven sixteenths is how much is sticking out of there now. On the other side, it was three sixteenths with the nut on and the dust cover and all that stuff. And a half inch is sticking out of there now. Technically, it is 17 30 seconds, but half inch. Okay, and it looks like this is like a cone, so it's going to press on to the, looks like a sleeve that's holding the ball bearings in place. Alright, I do see some grease on there. I'm sure that's factory. So we will grease this up. Oh, I see a lot of dirt and hair on there too. <laughs> Alright, fun stuff. Alright, there are nine ball bearings on each side, so that's pretty easy. So the big thing is getting this out without destroying it. Okay, we're back to real simple again. Uh, this is definitely the cup, and this is definitely the race here. So that's how that works. So this kind of snugs up against the ball bearings and the wheel rotates around. Okay, they are barely in there. See, watch. I mean, this is no effort whatsoever to get that off. Now the bearings are free to come out. Let me grab a magnet. All right, let's see if I can get them all in one magnet. Almost, almost. All right. There we go. Of course, this side is more challenging. I got the ball bearings out. I always hated that word challenging. That's a bullshit boss word. So if your boss tells you at work that the job is challenging, it means it's going to be hard or a pain in the ass or otherwise no fun whatsoever. So let me work on that. All right, I just needed a bigger boat, so I got my larger screwdriver and got it back there, and that got it started, and then it came right out. Okay, even though I'm not finished with the dirty parts, I put on clean gloves and examined. There's nothing inside there. It's just the race with some old grease. Also, uh, there's plenty of dirt in there that's piled up over the years, so I am just going to do perform. How about that? Use the word perform. <laughs> A thorough cleaning of everything inside and out here. Okay, here we are all clean. Uh, in case you didn't know, there were stupid questions. And when I was a busboy, I asked my boss a stupid question. <laughs> I don't know what it was, honestly. And his response was, you know what clean looks like, right? And, uh, anyway. So, get everything nice and clean. 
all pretty. Before we throw a bunch of grease at it. Alright, got some more parts to clean. Alright, so I was cleaning up my bearing seals and I noticed that uh, they are metal, not plastic. So, in another 10 years when I take them out again, I know I won't have to <laughs> worry about destroying them when I remove them. So let me get these all cleaned up. And they're like a cap. So, it helps with the bearing keeps the bearings in there on the race. All right, I'll get these all cleaned up. All right, so the ball bearing seal is like a plastic coated stamp thin piece of metal. So uh, it's going to go on there like that. Push it in. Or is it, I'm sorry, it's going to go on there like that. Push it in. <laughs> sorry about that. All right, I use Marine Grease uh, NLGI 1.5, even if uh, 2 is called out, 2.0. Uh, it's a waterproof Marine Grease, you know, they, I use it on uh, bearings on the trailer wheels. Uh, I was introduced to this when I worked on Mercedes. Uh, and don't work on trucks or tractors or four-wheelers. Do work on lawnmowers, though. So anyway, uh, because it fits most of my applications, even though a lot of them call for NLGI 2.0, uh, I typically use this uh, waterproof green marine grease. All right, this is going to be very easy because um, of the seal. So I can actually do one side and then the other and I can do it either up and down like this or sideways and then turn the wheel around the other way. So either way the bearings will not fall out and I'll show you that. Alright I've prepped the race on the left side. I'm going to do the sprocket side uh, the freewheel side uh, <clears throat> last. So let me get my nine balls here and set them in place. All right, they're all down. Now I'll just put them into the race here. Not worry about the excess squeezing out. Doesn't matter if it falls in. I'm going to seat them, seat, S-E-A-T, them down, then I'm going to goo up my seal here, put some grease on this side that's facing, and then uh, set it in place. Alright, I'm going to seat the seal, I found that uh, 13 sixteenths and 21 millimeter both will work. Get that in place here if my glove will get out of the way. And uh, let me clean my hands before I drive it. Alright, I'm going to set that socket down on the drive side instead of the uh, nut side. So I'll have that up. Make sure it's all lined up correctly. I'll use a little hammer. Started and then drive it down in there. All right, now the other side. Alright, that's the other side. Now we're going to do another pair of clean gloves for reassembly. And since I don't have a freewheel hub, this is going to be easy. Just going to take the axle and 
bring it on through easy peasy screw the race on here that's what it is it's the race and I believe this side was like a quarter inch or something I'll look at my notes and uh, get that set in place all right well it does help if you use all the parts that came with the bike to put it back together with in this case, we have okay. We have the spacer, the washer, the nut. say the left side gets 3 sixteenths here. 3 sixteenths. And I get to take it off again because the dust cap goes on there. <laughs> yeah, I'm a genius. Alright, now on this side, I'm going to snug it down until the race touches the ball bearings and then I'll decide how snuggalicious I want it here. I can still hear them. spacer. We have our washer and we have our axle nut here. And that was a quarter inch. Take the measurement. Oh, it's much quieter now. All right. Make sure everything's snug down here. Get my wrenches and snug it down. All right. Geez, I'm in luck. I had a five-eighths tool that I had already ground down. I was having, I was struggling getting a tool on here. Uh, once I had the tension set for the bearing and I was satisfied that the race and the cup tension was correct. So then got my wrench on here and tighten down the axle nut. Get these guys snug. Snuggalicious. There we go. Now we have quiet wheel bearings. I can still hear it, but it's not grindy. And when I feel it, it's not grinding. Smooth. So, very interesting. Nice little education for me here. Alright, I have my crappy spoke protector back on. And I do mean it's crappy, but, you know, paid $450 for the bikes. So i got to save money somehow. I have one on order, but it's lost in space. It's supposed to be delivered today, but it doesn't even say they shipped it yet. So who knows what's going on there. So anyway, we'll get that on there, and then we'll get our new uh, freewheel on there, our sprocket set. So here's our, ooh, ah, new set. Here's our dirty old set. <laughs> All right. 
right, so uh, no gun on this. We're going to do it all by hand. So let me get this started and make sure everything is correct here. It's not cross thread and go to town. So I'll set the tool in there. That'll help guide it over the axle so it's not skewed and tilted all which way. Ask me how I know. And then we'll kind of use that as a guide. Make sure it goes on there correctly. All right, we're started. So I'll just use the uh, ratchet here to uh, finish it off. Okay, we'll just get it snug. No need to go too tight because actually when you're pedaling, that's tightening here. See, the loosening is, well, the freewheel. So, so just kind of get it nice and snug. I don't know if there's a torque value. I don't see one on the tool. So that, as they say, is that. All right, next I'll get the quick release on there. And the spring is cone shape, and the cone goes down, the wide part up. Then we'll put the cap on. Then uh, we'll, we'll, I'll get it on the wheel and um, adjust it from there. All right, so I'll put the brake back together here. And we are reassembled and we're ready for our bike ride. So that was a lot easier than I thought because there was no freewheel hub to deal with. Just the good old fashioned ball bearings like in the good old days, which none of you know because <laughs> you're not as old as I am. Anyway much easier than a lot of the modern bikes I've seen. Alright, well thank you for watching.